This time on Cinevision, the games have scarred me for life. Okay, perhaps scarred me for life is a little bit of an exaggeration, but we're going to look at some games from early on in my computing experiences, i.e. Amstrad CPC games, because that's what I had. Um, for the first couple of years of me playing games from Christmas 90, 1985 onwards, that um, I had problems with. And what better place to start than Bridget, a game that came in with a pack in £100 worth of free software pack with the 464. I had it on Pirate. Um, because my dad's mate David gave us this. So, Bridget, the idea is you live in a town and there's bridges between your house and your mate's house and you control the bridges to get across uh, the town. It's by Epic Soft. And here we go. So you're running across town and you control the bridges. But wait, no, there's a second person. Well, yeah, you can see why you've got 50 lives or 49 now. Um, you have to get all the little men across the map um, by pressing up, down, left or right in the joystick or keys on the keyboard to uh, control the bridges. And you can only con control so many of the two of the bridges at once, basically, and they flip up automatically after a certain amount of time. It's like an LCD game, except absolutely rubbish. Now, when I first played this, and it was one of the first games I played on the CPC, naturally it was my fault, because um, I was obviously a bad games player. But here we are, 35, nearly 35 years later, and it's every bit as bad. It's, it, the graphics are colourful. The music is um, astonishingly awful and... Um, makes me want to sing a song about a certain German leader from the war. Yeah, it's just awful. And then you start to analyse the graphics and there's one of those things, boats. And this is the easiest level and I've got two lives left. I've got 11 men out of 50 down to the bottom map. And by the way, this is it. This is the only map in the game. There's no more. There's no more at all. This is the game. That is it. So if I lose one more life, I've, I'm dead and I've got 12 men. I'm going to get 13 men to the... No, I didn't. You have lost. Press S to restart. So let's try level 9. And it's a bit faster and the men come out quicker. But the game does slow down the more there is on screen. It's just appalling. And unfortunately, this isn't the only game made by Epic Soft. They also made Roland on the Run. Another game where you have hundreds of lives and it's one screen and, well, you get the idea. Um, they also did Centre Court, which I can't remember how well that plays. Got to revisit that one. Now, this is, this is one of the worst games on the CPC. I thought it was my fault, but no. It's Epic Soft's fault. Poker Tony Wilf. A game I'd heard of before on the C64 and Spectrum because I'd seen it advertised. But um, this is the Amstrad CPC version. I saw it on the Encore re-release label and it was marked on the Amstrad CPC as never previously released at full price or some such. I thought, hey, it's going to be a full price game. But, uh, you know, never, never put out at that price. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's a reason. And you can probably see what that reason is. You're, you are Wilf. You have to go around and collect all the crystals and all the screens between the various time zones. Um, uh, yeah, you can see what the problem is. The movement is appalling on your main character. There's no precision at all. You touch the joystick and you go completely zooming off in one direction or the other. No precision at all. And the problem is all the crystals are hidden away in little places where you need to scoot through. And it's impossible. It's just utterly impossible. The, the whole handling of your character is terrible and the sprites flicker. And you can see why Elite never put this game out. But I tried to persevere with this rubbish. Because it was an Elite game, so therefore it should be fairly good. And it's a not a full... Well, it was supposed to be a full price game. Once upon a time, usually full price games had a certain amount of uh, playability to them. But this... And the screenshots look good as well. Of course, there were reviews of the Spectrum and C64 versions that you'd seen and the nice things on the cover about those versions 
from the magazines, but this is utter tat. Uh, it's... You can kind of imagine this being an Amsoft game, but it's so difficult. And this screen here, just trying to get through it and just timing it against those flickery sprites, it's dreadful. It's absolutely appalling. And Elite were known to be a company, perhaps, um, how shall we say, they had some sharp practices um, back in the day. Uh, repackaging games and things like that. But this, even they uh, didn't want to release this at full price. Um, and yeah, it, it's dreadful and it disappointed me so much. I, I can't... Sometimes you want budget game and you thought, ah, well, it's rubbish. Something about this game being so bad got to me. And the fact I can still remember these screens, I can feel the bitter disappointment for having spent my 199 on this pile of tat i just yeah it's dreadful it's a it's a game that on the spectrum of c64 was perfectly acceptable at the time um some of the views were fairly good for it as i recall on the amstrad it's utter complete rubbish atom smasher by romic another amsoft title of course many of my early games were amsoft and the title is a bit of a giveaway of course it's a kind of a nuclear reactor kind of a chemistry type you know you know the kind of thing things with atoms and you've got smash atoms your little spaceship bottom left hand corner and you have to zap the little circle in the middle uh, when you zap the little circle in the middle a little sequence happens and another baddie arrives and you have to do the same all over again and you mustn't hit uh, the enemies or you lose a life and the things you're hitting are electrons you have a certain amount of energy and you also overheat as well so you can't move around and shoot too much so you've got to think about how you're moving around but the problem is this is pretty much it um again it's a game that kind of has a sound and almost look of an arcade game but it's i suspect well, there's machine code going on but it's the kind of game you got on the type in and for all the noise and sounds and movement there's nothing at all here and I tried to persevere with this game. And again, it hurt me somewhat more than other games. That this was rubbish. Because I thought, there must be a game in here somewhere. This is clever. This is obviously beyond my intelligence. No, it's not beyond your intelligence. Um, and yeah, these green things come in from the side as well. The levels progress. It's, it's not beyond your intelligence. It's just rubbish. City Slicker. A game that should be called Too Clever by Half. I bought this in my local Amstrad CPC or my local Amstrad dealer for £1.99. Um, it was a water damage cover and I thought, well, wow, full price game for £1.99. I'm going to get it, you know, for that price because it, it's you know, got a messy cover, but um, the tape's fine. And it was pretty much new out six months ago anyway. So I got it and you have to, you are... Um, the main character there wandering around and there's the baddie who's wandering around on the right hand side there you got to defeat him because he's planted a bomb in the house of commons um and you wander around the maps the graphics look nice the animation's okay it's not very colorful it's a spectrum port but it's far too clever by half what you have to do it's not simply a wander around and collect them up it's not even like dizzy we got to get we do have to get objects and set puzzles off but it's also, it's also convoluted and there's so much going on. And the baddie is always chasing you. I've got a cheat running here, by the way, so I've got infinite energy. Um, the game's impossibly difficult. I never got past four or five screens of it. And neither could any of my friends. And this seems to be a common complaint about the game. That it's just far too complex and far too difficult. It's just... Oh... It promises so much. It promises you can want, you can go around London and see all the sites and collect the objects. You go in the tube, you go between locations, you can go down to the Strand, to the Houses of Parliament. But it does things like that. You collect the magnet and then you, that's an insta-death. Um, except I'm using a cheat. Um, I just... It's, it's some programmer who's come up with a great idea and just over-complicated it. I made it these games are for kids really 
and I'm not a kid anymore, I still can't play it. It's a game that promises so much, and I was thinking, yeah, full price game, it's rubbish. Molecule Man, the second budget game I ever bought, and hey, the back of this promised so much because it looked like Night Law and Alien 8, and it promised a maze design as well. So you could, so you could have like Night Law and Alien 8 and design your own levels. Wow, gonna have some of this. $1.99. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then you play it. It's slow, plodding, graphically messy with things getting lost in a way that simply doesn't happen in the Ultimate Games. And you've got two timers. You've got a timer to complete the game in the middle, but you've also got this radiation pill timer. And you've got to get money and then buy pills to survive. Which means pretty much you're dead within about a minute unless you find some more money. And that keeps on happening and going on. You have to buy more radiation pills. If you can have a timer, have a timer. Don't have two timers. This game does not need the radiation pill thing in it at all. If you didn't have that time pressure element of it, it would be a far better isometric game. But the result was, I'd get, and I was quite a young kid at the time, how old was I? Eight, nine, something like that. I could not. I have bought some pills there, but I, that's another like 18, 17, 16 seconds, something like that, of gameplay. Okay, well, 30 seconds, let's say. And you got to go and buy some more. It's just so frustrating one stupid design decision when the coder made this game let's take something that could be fairly okay I, well the controls are dreadful and i say the graphics aren't as clear and easy to use as the ultimate games but for 199 you wouldn't complain but that whole time pressure thing means it's yeah it, it's just tat so there's some games that i came across when i was a fairly young games player that scarred me then and still make me cross now Bridget, it's a it's a game and watch game, a bad game and watch game. It's not even game and watch. Nintendo wouldn't get that rubbish out the door. It, it's something like Grandstand, or one of those knockoff games your grand bought at the market. Coca Tony Wilf, oh dear, it's just uh, if it's that bad, I mean, elite think then get it put in this rubbish yard at one ninety nine, still unplayable. Everyone involved should be utterly ashamed. It's an old game. And it's a badly converted old game. The game so badly converted, Elite never originally released it. Atom Smasher, a game that still today makes me go, yeah, this promises so much, and then you realise there's nothing at all there. Um, such a shame, really, because I think it's quite a clever idea. But City Slicker, a game, as I said before, that's far too clever by half. The programmers had a billion ideas and tried to implement them all at once. And it makes it far too difficult. If you could get around the game easier, and solve some of the problems easier in the game, the objects and things like that, and you didn't have the bad guy chasing after you, trying to zap you, um, it would be a far, far better game. But unfortunately, it's overcomplicated, and as a result, a bit crap. Molecule Man, they've added too much, too many ideas. Take that time element out of the radiation pills, and this game would be a half-decent 199 game with a level designer. Unfortunately, your games are so short, that it's just frustrating and annoying. So that's a deeply personal list of some games that really annoyed me when I was a young gamer. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and enable your notifications to Chini Vision. Hate saying that. Also, check out details below of the Patreon competition to win a wiki pad, and all details of that are below for people who kindly support Chini Vision on Patreon. <laughs>